Hi everyone, welcome to Zainal's NEET PG 2022 information series. In our earlier videos, we had uh, uh, taken you through the a structured framework to approach NEET PG 2022 counseling. We had suggested five steps ending up at the evaluation of the institutes and preparation of your order of preference for choice filling. Uh, we started with uh, getting your certificates and documents that are ready. We went through all the documents that are required and uh, how to get them ready and which are mandatory, etc. And then we also went through the institutes that are uh, that come underneath PG and the courses that these institutes offer and under which counselings these seats, the institute course combination, which is the seat, uh, in the, uh, come under which counselling, uh, whether they come under one counselling, multiple counsellings, and what are the different quotas within each of these counselings and who is eligible for these quotas. If you haven't gone through the earlier videos, just look at the NEED PG 2022 playlist and you will be able to see all information regarding the first few steps that need to be followed. Now in the next step, after looking at the closing ranks and possibilities, one of the major things that one needs to understand is to have complete information on the sequence of counselings. In the sense, which counselling happens first between All India and state counsellings? What is the sequence, whether the round one, round two, round three of each of these rounds? When do they happen, whether they are in sequence or whether they are one after the other, etc. And uh, also the rules on eligibility as far as uh, each of these counsellings are concerned and the upgradation rules and exit rules in case you exit a seat, whether you will be eligible for further rounds, etc. So we will cover to the maximum extent possible in this video on the sequence of counselings and the eligibility rules and what happens after exit in each of these counselings. Uh, these, this is a revisit of 2021 rules. We are looking at 2021 rules and in case there is a change in 2022, you may have to change your strategy or modify your decision based on those changes. So keep looking for changes. All India is expected to be the same, most likely to be the same. And uh, state round ones may have minor changes based on your state. So look at those changes in rules before you take a decision on at any stage of the council on whether to continue with that round as the seat in that round or move on to the next round. So the sequence of counseling is very straightforward. It fall, there, there is an alternate sequence that is followed between All India and state, round, state rounds. First All India round one happens. Everything starts with the notification from NCC for All India round one and then registration for All India round one. Post that, most, most of the states will notify uh, only post that. Even if some state notifies prior to that, they will start registrations only post All India Round 1 starts. And then you have All India Round 2, then state round 2, All India mop up and state mop. Post that, you have the stray vacancy rounds or state further rounds, like states may have three or four rounds, etc. Before there is a mop up or there, there may be uh, directly institutional rounds for the private seats, etc. So this part is different across states and this part is different across states, but this remains the same across all states. Uh, till All India Round, uh, State Round 2, All India Round 1, State Round 1, All India Round 2 and State Round 2 is the sequence that is always followed. Beyond that, there might be some differences in the terminologies used like mop up or stray, etc. Now, one of the major things is that when you look at these counselings and when we say they follow a sequence, it does not mean that registrations cannot happen in parallel. It does not mean that only after the end of All India Round 1, State Round 1 registration starts. They may happen in parallel, but when we say it is in sequence, it means only after All India Round 1 results are out, State Round 1 results will be out. And only after State Round 1 results are out, All India Round 2 results are out. This is the major, this is how it happens majorly. Provided most provided your state follows the timelines. Rarely one or two states won't follow the timelines, but otherwise this is how it happens. Now we come to eligibility. Who is eligible for each counseling? All India round one, every candidate who is qualified is eligible. So irrespective of whether you are a domicile of whichever state, you are eligible for All India round. You may not be eligible for All India quota, let's say if you are from Jammu and Kashmir. If you may not be eligible for a certain set of seats if you are not from gen category uh, and uh, below 50 percentile etc but everyone is eligible for some seat or the other through all india counseling especially all the deemed seats everyone is eligible for and all the dnb seats everyone who's qualified is eligible and one once you complete all india round one you will be in one of those states which we will come to in detail at a later point in time and you will look at state round ones whether i'll be eligible for state round one based on my all india round one status 
For state round one, state eligibility rules apply, whether it is a private seats or whether it is split as government or institutional quota or NRI quota, etc. The state rules apply for state eligibility. The all India state st status is not relevant for state eligibility. Whether you have joined an all India round one seat, not joined an all India round one seat, not been allotted an all India round one seat, joined and resigned as all India round one seat, doesn't matter. Everyone who is eligible as per state rules is eligible for state round one, irrespective of his or her all India round one seat. In some states, there is only a one time registration done. So please check whether your state allows registration beyond round one if you are going to miss round one. One. Do not miss round one is what we always suggest. Most of the states provide a fresh choice filling in subsequent rounds, but there are some major states, let's say like Maharashtra, and there are some states like Karnataka, Kerala, where the editing of choices is limited to certain rules. So just ensure that right from round one, your choices are right. Choices are rightly filled in the right preference order. Uh, so check your state rules on fresh choice filling for the further rounds of state. And free exit rules may vary in the sense each state may have a different rule as far as allotment and non-joining is concerned. So if you're allotted and you don't join, whether you are eligible for round two of state is something that varies across state. And whether you can participate in round two in such a case without a penalty or a loss of uh, forfeiture of the deposit amount you paid is also dependent on state. So those you will have to check. But as far as state round one eligibility is concerned, everyone who is eligible as per state rules is eligible and all India round one candidates, irrespective of the states, uh, irrespective of uh, their all India round one state uh, status, state round one eligibility is followed. And then you come to all India round two. Now you may be in multiple situations here, whether you may have hold, you may be holding an all India round one seat or a state round one seat or no seat. You might have resigned one, joined and resigned one of these seats, or you might have been allotted and resigned one of these seats. All India round two, straightforward. Remember this, all candidates are eligible. There is no confusion in it. Every candidate who is qualified is eligible, irrespective of his or her state round one or all India round one status. If you have already registered in all India round one, whatever be your status, whether you joined and resigned or what, did not join uh, at all, you were not allotted. If you are registered in all India round one, you can use the same lot because round one is free exit, even, even if you are allotted and you have not joined. There is fresh registration for the rest of the candidates who did not register in All India Round. You forgot to register in All India Round. Some, uh, some candidates maybe took a choice not to register for All India Round for whatever reasons. Then it is fresh registration. And it is fresh choice filling in All India Round. Whatever choices you filled in All India Round, you can forget them. You will see a blank list when you start and you will start filling in fresh choices. You can edit your choices in whatever way you want. You can give a completely new list of choices too. You can move around choices from one to another, etc. in All India Round 2. So that is as far as All India Round 2 eligibility is concerned, everyone is eligible. Now we come to state round 2. Where will you be in here? You may be in a state whether you have a seat status in All India Round 2 or you may have a seat status from your state round 1 without any impact in All India Round 2. You would not have been allotted. You may have a state from state round 1. So now in state round 2, who is eligible is a question that uh, is, the, is the next question after you complete your all India round two allotment and the entire deadline of join. First, all India round two join candidates are not eligible for state rounds. What happens is at the end of all India round two, if you've been allotted a seat and join that seat, then you become ineligible for all the state rounds which happen further. And you will also become ineligible for all India mop up round, which we will come to at a later point in time. So as far as state round two is concerned, a straightaway ineligibility is All India round two join candidates. And All India round two allotted and did not join candidates. In case you have been allotted and did not join, you will still be eligible for state round two depending upon what you did in state round. If you are already eligible, then you will still continue to be eligible. This action of All India round two allotment and non-joining will not impact your state round two eligibility. And the third part is third state R1 exited candidates. We don't know, uh, we don't have a generic answer to it. The R1 exited candidates eligibility, state R1 exited candidates eligibility depends on the state. So you'll have to check in your state whether you'll be eligible if you had exited from a state round one and take a decision during round one choice filling or And the next part is all India mop up. Who is eligible for all India mop up? 
like we said all india round to join candidates are not eligible for any other counseling therefore they are not eligible for all india mock up a rule that uh, due to uh, after supreme court's interference after candidates petition within the supreme court that uh, came up to be implemented starting from last year is that state r2 join candidates are eligible let us say you get a state in state r2 round to and you join that particular seat you become ineligible for all india mock up there may be a claim saying that i joined a state r2 seat and then i resigned the seat now i am not holding a seat i should be eligible for aa mock up that doesn't the rule doesn't mention that once you join a state round to seat after allotment you go and join in the institute that is the end of all india mock up or all india stray for you will not be eligible for all india mock up or any all india counseling further which means it is a straight forward ineligibility for all india mock up all india round to joined are not eligible state round to joined are not eligible resignation of state round to seat post joining it doesn't matter you can't resign an all india round to seat post joining so anyways that is a given fresh registration if you are allotted an all india round to and you did not join you would have forfeited with uh, exited with forfeiture so in that case you will have fresh registration and you will have fresh choice filling in all india mock up every all india round has a fresh choice filling till all india mock up you will have a fresh choice filling possibility and you will be able to fill in choices from the previous round in case you have been allotted a seat in all india round 2 and you did not join the seat you will be able to fill in the same seat in all india mock up now the last part which is actually a structured thing is the state mock up which usually happens after all india mock up sometimes they overlap but uh, in some states but uh, usually it happens after all india mock up in some states for reference it may not be called a state mock up it may be called a phase 3 or a round 3 etc this term state mock up need not necessarily be uh, uh, confused all you need to know is the round that happens after all india mock up in the state whether i am eligible or not is what you need to look at because at this stage most of the seats would be taken by the end of this stage so who is eligible for the state mock up all india mock up joint candidates are not eligible for state mock up so if you have been allotted a seat in all india mock up and you join the seat you are not eligible for state mock up state are to join candidates eligibility varies state wise which you know in case you have joined a state are to uh, seat and then you are trying to attend our state mock up whether you will be able to upgrade from state r2 to state mock up depends on state some states even now allow the subgradation some states do not allow the subgradation they you will have to either make a choice to join the state r2 seat or exit the counseling or quit the seat and then move on to state mock up all these are possibilities depending on the state check for your state on what the rules are the third part is the biggest confusion i am being a lot i have been allotted in all india mock up but i did not join the seat will i be eligible for state mock up now this is a confusion that exists because five states at least like tamil nadu west bengal himachal pradesh kerala and possibly one more uh, state uh, which uh, do not, are there which do not allow all india mock up allotted candidates to attend state mock if you have allo been allotted in all india mock up you are not eligible for state mock up whether you join that all india mock up seat or not doesn't matter for the rest of the states all india mock up allotted and joined candidates become ineligible for state mock so this this distinction depends upon your state and so have a look at your state mock up rules before taking a decision at this stage at all india mock up finally you have the all india stray round which is the final round of all india this happens online for all india quota dnb and the institutional quota delhi university bhu amu ip seats for all india stray round the eligibility in all is very clear you should have participated in all india mock up you should have registered and filled choices in all india mock up only then you will be eligible for all india stray round which happens online you if you had participated in mock up and you are not allotted a seat in all india mock up then you are eligible for all india stray round there is uh, uh, absolute there should be absolute clarity on this here if you have participated in mock up and you are allotted a seat let's say and you join you don't join doesn't matter you become ineligible once you are allotted a seat in all india mock up you become ineligible in all india state 
and also one more thing to be uh, two more things that need to be noted are that there is no fresh registration in the square room and you will your choices filled in all india mop up will be processed for stay round in case you become eligible basically if you have not been allotted in all india mop up then the same choices you filled in all india mop up will be processed for stay round and no new choices will be you will not be able to add choices or modify choices and no one new will be able to register for stay if you are not registered for all india mop -up. for deemed universities the counseling is offline so the choice filling concept is not relevant here but only if you have registered in all india mop up and you are not allotted you will be eligible for offline concept state further rounds it is almost the same if you have joined all india mop up definitely you become ineligible for state stray joined candidates all india stray joined candidates are also ineligible and but further rules on state strays or state institutional quota completely depend on state uh, so we will have to have a separate video on what happens at this stage in states and in fact in each of these rounds in state what are the eligibility uh, and upgradation exit rules etc so this is the sequence of counseling explained uh, in easy terms what we will also have is we'll have another video come up on uh, what is a eligibility criteria based on each of these scenarios we will do it scenario based so that it is very easy for you to understand or come back and see based on what scenario what is the eligibility criteria so we will take you through that in detail in another video which will which probably will post in a days time uh, thank you so much for watching hope this was helpful uh, we would still try to simplify it in the next video if you go through the next video you will know the scenario based eligibility exit uh, impact choice filling impact upgradation impact etc that would be really helpful uh, so we have got this complete information in zyner uh, we would be having all data of all rounds including the eligibilities for further rounds which we will be updating uh, uh, in a, in a week in a week's time so just have a look at the zyner portal and have maximum information for your counseling hope this has been very helpful and hope zyner has been helpful as well for making your choices thank you